came across this really interesting study and it was the top five human fears. It was a study done at an American university a few years ago. They wanted to find out other than death and serious illness, what do we as humans fear the most? And it was quite surprising. So number five, we had the fear of needles. Anyone here scared of needles? Yeah, yeah? okay, you usually get quite a few hands. I thought I wasn't and then I had a blood test last month and then I didn't want to look at it. So I'm also part of that crew now. Anyone apart from me scared of drowning? Yeah? Got a few more, so that's number four. And number three, you have the fear of bugs, snakes, spiders, mice, small, annoying creatures. No? Some people? Yeah. Uh, number two, you have the fear of heights. Yeah? Don't look out the window. <laughs> Don't look out the window. And according to studies, the number one fear was actually the fear of public speaking. Okay? Which is interesting. For a couple of reasons. Number one, when I had a real big fear of public speaking, I didn't think many people resonated or understood how anxious I felt when the spotlight was on me. Little did I know that so many people go through those exact same feelings, just that some people hide it. The second interesting thing about this is, as a coach now, I've realized as humans, we don't always fear what we think we fear. So for example, if you're scared of heights, the truth is usually you are more so scared of falling, and the higher you go, the more your fear of falling increases. If on your way to this room you saw a tiger, you think you're scared of the tiger, but you're more so scared of getting hurt. Because if tigers didn't hurt us, it's just a cute animal. With public speaking, we think it's a fear of communicating, but actually it's more so a fear of public perception that stops you from doing the public speaking. Like a fear of judgment. Because if I put you in a room in front of people that you feel familiar around, like your family, your friends, your partner, your children, you should be able to speak to them just fine. But if I put you in a different room, the same number of people, but a different type of environment, work meeting, presentation, at uni at work, all of a sudden your ability to speak and communicate doesn't match up, okay? In both settings, it's public speaking, which is why I say the problem isn't actually public speaking, it's more so a fear of judgment that stops you from doing the public speaking, okay? So, really important. Now, you all have a post-it note. What I want you to write on your post-it note, in summary, so just one sentence or one word, is what your dream outcome is when it comes to your speaking, when it comes to your confidence. What does it look like? So some people, to give you some examples, will write, you know, my dream outcome is to be able to speak confidently no matter who I'm speaking in front of. Okay. Other people's dream outcome is to be able to influence people. Other people say they have a big wedding speech coming up and they just want to get that right. Okay, so I want you all to just quickly write down what your dream outcome is. Afterwards, you're going to share it with the people next to you. But just think about when, when it comes to public speaking, when it comes to communicating confidence, what is the thing that you are looking for? Okay. So just give you guys a few minutes to write that. <laughs> so what could it be? If you're looking for inspiration, maybe look at the person sat next to you, see what they wrote. What is your dream outcome? So that's something we're going to address today. Okay. All of you will leave this class more confident than you came in. Number two, reducing anxiety. Once you believe that, okay, maybe I can get better, you might come on stage and you get the symptoms. Your hands are sweaty, your heart's beating too fast, you're forgetting your words, you're speaking too fast, and then you leave thinking, ah, oh, I could have done so much better. Today, we're gonna to go through proven ways that you can reduce that anxiety and manage it so you can be better when speaking and communicating. Only at that point, I believe we should really, truly work on techniques and what you should do with your arms, with your body, with the eye contact. These are things we're going to work on today. However, the first two, to me, are the most important because if you feel really anxious, it's really hard to execute the techniques under pressure. Okay, so today we're going to mainly work on the first two, but we're going to sprinkle in some techniques as well. Okay, so about us, we are believing greatness. So what we do is public speaking coaching, communications coaching, we just really help people overcome the fear of public speaking so that they feel better when speaking and they speak better. This is pretty much what we do. These are some of the organizations that we've worked with. So Noteworthy mentions of the police and TED. So we currently work with people that are delivering TED Talks. We do some coaching with them prior to that, okay? And about myself, so my name is Frederick. You guys can just call me Fred. I'm a professional sprinter. So I've been running for a while and I've had a roller coaster journey when it comes to confidence, public speaking. I grew up in Milan in Italy where I was actually the only kid of color in my whole school and in my whole area. So that really affected my confidence growing up didn't feel like I belonged, didn't look like anyone, and at no point did I get a Valentine's Day card. As an adult, it's quite funny, but as a kid, it did bother me a lot, and I struggled with confidence. I then moved to London at 13, not speaking any English. You can imagine how tough that was. It was a different adventure. 
within the first couple of months, we actually moved to a really rough area. I actually got robbed twice. So I wasn't confident at all. I didn't speak any English and I couldn't pronounce words correctly. Eventually, my teacher literally forced me into athletics. He's like, you're really good at running, try running, which was really good. Within a couple of years, I represented Italy. Seven years after I started, I signed pro. Once I signed pro, I got loads of different opportunities like TV appearances and some schools got in touch with me saying, look, we have a budget for a speaker and we want you to speak to our students about sports. Okay? And I didn't even know you could get paid to speak. So I said, of course, like, who wouldn't take the opportunity? I prepared the speech and I thought it was a great speech. But as the days got closer and closer, there was a voice in my head telling me, whoa, 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 whoa. you're an athlete, you're not a speaker. 400 teenagers, they're going to find you boring. It's not going to go well. So I thought, I'm overthinking it, I'll be okay. Two days before the booking, I had a sleepless night and I sent the school an email saying, I'm not coming, I had the flu. I said I had the flu, I lied. And that was my turning point, that was 2018, because I realized I needed to do something about it. Okay, as a kid, I would always say, when I grow up, I'll be confident. I found myself as a grown up, not confident. So eventually started to grow in personal development and four years on now, I am a public speaking coach, I set up an organization and I do keynote speeches all over the country. I didn't set out for any of this to happen. Right? I'm still training full time for next year's Olympics. That's my big goal. What I found though is once I stopped burying my head under the sand, I started to improve a lot faster than the voices in my head told me that I would. And I tell you my journey as inspiration because I moved here at 13, not speaking English, super shy and introvert. And still to this day, I don't really like attention, which is quite funny that I do this stuff. But no matter where you are on the journey, you can and you will get better. Okay? And hopefully this will be the start of the journey for some of you. Amazing. So, Really important, I like to call my brain Brian. And I say that because every week people tell me, look, just like you, I've let those opportunities slip away. There are things I wanted to do, but something told me not to. So for me, it was going into that school. Okay, I wanted to go into that school, but the voice of doubt, Brian, told me, don't go, and I listened. Other people say, look, at work, the manager says, has anyone, has anyone got anything to say? And I have something to say, but something in my voice tells me, don't do it, and I don't do it, okay? I'm not sure what the voice of doubt has stopped you from doing. What I can guarantee is that today, that voice will speak to you, okay? Because I'm not just gonna speak, you guys are gonna speak as well. At some point, I'm gonna say, who wants to come up and speak? And Brian will tell you, don't speak. Don't go up and speak. Stay seated, right? I really encourage you to show Brian who's boss, because for a really long time, I tried to figure out how can I get rid of these voices? How can I get rid of the voice of doubt? I learned that the voices will never go away. Okay, that is a part of your brain called the amygdala that's responsive to fear, protects you from danger. So if you're crossing the road and a car's coming, the amygdala tells you, stop. Your brain perceives public speaking right now to be a dangerous thing, which is why when I say come up and speak, it's gonna say, don't do it. I encourage you to show that voice who's boss, okay? Today and going forward, all right? Awesome, so before we get into it, this is how I define learning. Same condition, different behavior. So at the moment, when you feel nervous and anxious, you probably don't step out your comfort zone, you don't speak, or when you speak, you speak too fast, or you don't do your best. By the end of this class, if you would have learned something under the same condition, so you're still feeling a bit nervous, you exhibit a different behavior, okay? Really, really important. Awesome. So, on your post-it note, before we get into it, please write down on a scale of one to 10, what you would rate your fear of judgment, okay? Be really, really honest. We established that public speaking fear is more so your fear of judgment. So on a scale of one to 10, 10 being is really, really high. Three, four, two being is quite low. What would you rate your fear of judgment? Please write it down on your post-it notes now. And my promise is that the num whatever number you put down, in one hour's time, it will be a lot closer to one. Okay, we're gonna revisit these, it'll be a lot closer to one. So be super honest, on a scale of one to 10, where is your fear of judgment? Awesome, fantastic. So what I want you guys to do, for the warm-up. We're gonna do this in pairs, okay? So if the numbers allow it. So with some of the exercises today will be a bit like, whoa, what's happening? It's really strange. But there is a method to all the madness. I will explain the exercises afterwards, okay? So what I want you to do in pairs is I want you to count up to three. Really simple. So one person says one, the other person says two, then you say three. And they say one, two, three. Continuously, just up to three. See whether you find it really easy or surprisingly a little bit harder than you thought, okay? So to be clear, if I say one, Three. Oh. One. Back to one. Let's try again. One. Two. Three. One. Two. One. Three. 
Just that up to three, okay? Super simple. So get into pairs, try that, and see how you find it, okay? I'll give you one minute to do that. So you might have to do it with the person next to you, behind you. Over to you. Harder than you thought, okay? How did you find it? Okay. Yeah, started to get really jumbled up. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, you found it okay? Cool. Yeah? Okay, cool, cool, cool. How did you find it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. It was like a game, literally. So that exercise is a fun introduction. <laughs> guys, guys. No worries. That exercise is a fun introduction to what we call presence, okay? If you're not present in your pair, something as simple as one, two, three can get confusing as everyone else is saying one, two, three, I'm walking around spying on you, and you can get easily distracted. How that manifests in speaking is that if we are speaking, we get easily distracted if we're not present in our message. Someone looks like they're not paying attention and our attention goes to them, oh my gosh, I'm boring them, this is terrible. Someone's gone on their phone, oh my gosh, this is really bad, they don't want me to be here. One, three. One, three. <laughs> Do you understand? Instead of saying two, you clap. <laughs> if you're anything like me when I first started, eye contact was something I struggled with. So we're going to do some eye contact training. What you're going to do in pairs, so different pair, so not the same pair, different pair, you're going to stand up and you're going to make eye contact for a period of time. Okay? So you can look away if it's intense, you can blink, don't forget to breathe, but you're just making eye contact, no talking. Whether it's one person or whether it's many people, if you want to connect to the people that you're speaking to, eye contact is important. The second thing about the exercise is that it shows you what happens when you remove the spotlight from yourself and you put it onto someone else or the audience. Initially, that should have been pretty awkward. Okay, you're staring at a stranger. What are we doing? Should I look at their eyes, their nose, one eye, the other eye, and it's awkward. Once I introduce the questions though, that voice that tells you, oh my God, this is so awkward, the voice should reduce because it's no longer about you, it's about them. How are they feeling right now? Have they got a story to tell? And that should make it less awkward to make eye contact with these people. So with, when it comes to public speaking, often it's difficult to make eye contact because we go into it with the spotlight on us. We ask ourselves the question, are these people going to like me? If you ask yourself that question, if someone looks a bit uninterested, someone goes on their phone, someone looks a bit puzzled, see, via their nonverbal cues, the answer to that question is no, they don't look interested you're going to feel like rushing the speech and getting off stage as soon as possible. What we should do instead, we should go into public speaking with the spotlight on the audience. So the question we should ask ourselves is, are these people understanding my message? How much value can I give to these people? If you ask yourself that question and someone's nonverbal cues seem like they may be uninterested, they seem puzzled, they're going on their phone, maybe you need to make adjustments there and then. Because if you're asking yourself, do they understand my message? And the answer is no, maybe you're speaking too fast. You need to slow down. Maybe you need to increase the volume. And by asking yourself that question, you can make those adjustments there and then. Also, it will allow it to be less awkward because it's not about you, it's about them. You're going to want to make eye contact. If people are nodding along, if people are engaged, they understand what you're saying. You're ticking that box. Okay, so rather than going into a speech saying, oh, I hope they like me, are they gonna like me? Go into it asking yourself, are they understanding my message? I hope they understand my message. I'm going to deliver in a way that they understand my message. Okay? And that will change the way that you see the audience. Really, really important. Okay? Cool. So, to get into it, you know, I believe in greatness, as you could probably already tell. 
our way of coaching is a little bit different. The way we see communication is different. Usually public speaking is coached to be a bit performative. So when you go to a public speaking class, it's a bit like an acting class. Okay? People only focus on voice projection, body language. These are things that are important. But as we all know, public speaking isn't just about projecting your voice. is isn't just about having crazy body language. It's also about the things you can't see, like the nerves, the anxiety. These are things that we understand, which is why we have a very holistic approach to the way we do our coaching. Of course, we teach public speaking techniques. I'm not saying they're not important, but in isolation, they don't make you a good confident speaker. What we do is that we help you embrace vulnerability. So we do vulnerability-based training. And vulnerability is an interesting word. It usually has quite negative connotations. We associate vulnerability with weakness. Someone's vulnerable, we think, oh, maybe they're weak. Maybe they need help. When it comes to speaking and communicating, vulnerability means allowing yourself to be yourself, no matter who you're speaking in front of. That takes real strength. Because what we usually do is that we'll change depending on what room we're in, depending on who we're speaking to. And that isn't true confidence. True confidence is being able to show up as yourself, removing the mask, no matter who is there. In this space, people are taught fake it till you make it. I'm sure you've all heard it. And I think that is terrible advice. Because if you're faking it, then you're not actually addressing the problem. If the problem is that you feel nervous, you can do one of two things. You can fake it, pretend you're not nervous, and just go and do your thing. Or you can embrace it and think, ha, huh, I feel really nervous right now. What can I do now and next time to reduce these nerves? So we don't believe in fake it till you make it. We believe in embrace it until it improves. Because the biggest problem with nerves and anxiety is that we wish they were not there. And as soon as we feel nervous, as soon as we feel anxious, we see it as a sign of danger. I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing. Whereas, in fact, nerves are a normal biological experience. Okay? You're going to feel nervous. It's normal. So it's time to reframe it. So we do vulnerability-based exercises to allow you to remove that mask. Okay, I'm sure because of COVID, we're all tired of masks. They're a bit annoying. They hurt your ears. You can't breathe through them. But we often wear invisible masks where we hide who we truly are. Okay, our job is to help you remove that mask. We are going to do a vulnerability-based exercise today to help you understand it. Okay, so vulnerability. In terms of the techniques that we teach, it's all based on this study that there are three brains. Now, there aren't actually three brains. There are three parts of your brain. But to make the neuroscience simple, we just say there are three brains. Okay? And we need to use all three brains together to be good, confident speakers. Usually, we use some more than others. So the first one is the mind, where your logic lies. We usually have no problem being here. We hear a bit too much. It forces us to overthink. The second brain is the heart, your ability to speak with passion, the ability to speak with purpose, with personality, to sprinkle emotion into the things that you're saying. I'm sure you've all heard a speech that was boring, right? The person was probably reading a script, not speaking from the heart. On the other hand, you may have heard a speech that moved you. That person had the ability to speak from the heart. The third brain, which we usually ignore, is the guts, where your intuition lies. And this is actually where your true confidence lies. This is where we are as kids. This is why you hardly see any shy four-year-olds, because they're here all the time. And the older that we get, the more we, in adulthood, the more we reside here in our mind, okay? The problem with being here is that overthinking is one of the biggest killers of communication. When you're here, Brian will start flaring up and telling you things. So as you're speaking, Brian may tell you, why are you moving your hands so much? Stop moving your hands. Okay, uh, this is a bit awkward now. Maybe move around, maybe move. Uh, okay, that was an awkward move. Let me move a little bit more loose. Um, they're smiling, are they laughing at me? Are they like... I've been there trying to speak and present, and the voice is going bananas. That's what happens when you're here. The idea isn't not to think, but it's to reduce overthinking and to be less in your mind, more into the guts, more into your intuition. Trust in your intuition, because often it's not that we don't know what to do. Often we just don't do what we know. So we'll do an exercise now to help you understand the shift from when you are in your mind to when you're in your guts. There is a very big difference, okay? So another exercise we're gonna do in pairs, it can be the same pairs. Simple exercise called word association. I'm sure you might be familiar with it. Person one will say a word, any word, for example, chairs. Person two will say the first word that they can think of that associates with the first word. Person one says chairs, person two may say legs. Then person one will say, okay, what associative legs? Running. Associative running, marathons. Marathons, London. Back and forth like tennis. The idea though is to be less here and more in here. One sign that you're in your mind is when you look up or look to the side, okay? It's a sign that you're in your mind. So try and work on that eye contact that you're working with at the beginning. 
If your eyes go wandering, that's fine. Bring them back down to your gut. A second sign that you are in your mind is the use of filler words. So when you say words like, um, uh, well, um, well, those are a sign that you're overthinking. The problem with filler words is that they kill your credibility. Okay? Even if you know exactly what you're speaking about, you sound super unsure. Imagine if I was doing this presentation um, and uh, I was uh, talking like this, um, I would sound like, I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay? So we want to try and reduce those filler words. Okay, so those are two of the common signs. I've seen people play with their hair. I've seen people squeeze their hands together. Different people do different things when they are here. This exercise is to help you identify that. So if you're under pressure and you're like, oh, I don't know what word to think of, make a mental note of how your body reacts to it. Okay, so to be clear, for the people that just came as well, we're doing a simple exercise called word association. One person, person one will say the first word that comes to mind, for example, London. Person two will say the first word that they can think of that associates with London. So expenses. <laughs> that was a good one. Right. Expenses, banks, banks, mortgages. Back and forth like tennis. Try and get less in the, in the mind, more into the gut. Okay? And the sign that you're in your mind is when you're looking up, when you're using filler words, different signs like that. So please get into pairs and see how you get on. Okay? Over to you. So uh, do the person behind you. Do the behind you. Yeah. Uh, you guys do it as a free. You can do it as a free. You say a, I say a word like football. What was the first word that comes to mind? Oh, okay. Guys, I'm gonna pause you. We have been. Pause you. Guys, guys, guys. Sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We've been doing it 30 seconds, and I'm hearing a lot of um. I see a lot of people looking around. Like the words will come somewhere. Be more instinctive, okay? Trust your gut. Even if it doesn't really make sense, but it's the first thing that comes to mind, we say it. This is better, this is better. Post. Pandemic. Beautiful. Woman. Salad. On to which ease were the words flowing? Were they flowing really fast? Did you have moments that were a bit, ah? And if you had those moments of like, oh my God, how were you reacting? Were you looking up? Were you just squeezing your hands together? How was that moment? So I will ask you first. Once I just started looking around. Started looking around, yeah? Okay, that's interesting. So you know that's your cue. Gentleman behind her in a hat, yeah? Okay, 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 okay. So it got better as you were doing it, yes? How did you find it? First time we were like thinking everything we are doing with brain. Then he told us that we have to think of intuition. And then we used to just, the words cannot relate. Yeah. But we are speaking something. Good. <laughs> so you felt the difference, yeah? From when you're in your mind to when you're in your gut. Really, really important. Now, one of the things that the exercise shows us is that we overthink. Okay, because like I said at the beginning, most of you are overthinking. I said, say the first word that comes to mind, but we want it to be the perfect match, funny word, a clever word, intelligent word. We're putting pressure on ourselves to think of the best word rather than just the first word. Okay? And we often do that when it comes to speaking and presenting. Rather than just doing what we can, we just want it to be super perfect. We can't chase perfection. Okay? Nothing will ever be perfect. Number two, you probably felt like you had to think of a word really fast, but I didn't say anything to do with speed. I said, be instinctive, not fast. We do this when we ask questions in interviews. Rather than take our time, we feel like we need to think of the answer really quick, really quick. But we can and we should take our time, okay? And the third thing, the most important thing, this exercise shows you what you do when you're in your mind. So like you were saying, you're looking up to the side. Some people are saying, um. The reason it's important is because studies show if you are in your mind for a prolonged period of time, you hit what we call an overthinking state where your mind goes blank. I'm sure we have all experienced being somewhere, someone's asked you a question, and you know the answer to that question. But there and then, under pressure, you think, oh my gosh, I don't know. But you know the answer. Your mind's gone blank because you got into an overthinking zone. And we get into an overthinking zone by being in our mind for a prolonged period of time. That's why it's important that you know what you do when you're in your mind, so when it happens, you can reduce it. So my things is eye contact, for example, like I explained at the beginning. Now I'm better, but before, 
even just one-on-one -on -one conversation, my eyes would be wandering, and I would forget my trail of thought. As I'm speaking to you, I'd say, sorry, what were we just speaking about? Because I kept being in my mind. Once I realized that was the case, every time I'm speaking to someone, of course, my eyes may go wandering, I'll bring it back down. And now it hardly ever happens. So as humans, you will use filler words, your eyes will go wandering, but it's important that you catch yourself and you don't indulge in it for too long, else your mind will go blank. Sometimes people come to me saying, look, I'm a project manager. I've been working on this project for five years. I know it. When it's time to present it to the team, my mind went blank. It's like I didn't know it. And they didn't know their cues. So they're probably overthinking, overthinking. That's what happens. Okay, so we can't eradicate these habits today, but we can start working on them. So in the next exercise, whatever you were just doing, I want you to try to reduce it. Try your best. Be mindful of it. Okay, be mindful. So the next exercise will be in bigger groups. So we'll do groups of four or five. Doesn't matter. Instead of one word, you're going to think of one sentence. So it's going to be a little bit longer. You're thinking of one sentence. Person one will start with the first sentence that comes to mind. Same concept. So for example, yesterday, as I was going to the gym, I saw a big bus. Okay. Person two, first sentence that comes to mind to continue that story. I don't usually see buses on my road. So I thought, is there a diversion? What happened? Okay. Person three, as I walked down the road, I saw a huge accident and realized I made a mistake. I should have stayed at home. Okay, whatever. And the story will continue. It probably won't make much sense. That's not the aim. The aim is to just say the first sentence that comes to mind to continue the sentence before. Some of you will find this easier than one word. Some of you will find it harder. There is no right or wrong. It just means you need to work on two different things. Okay? So two, super simple. So be clear, if person one starts the sentence, they could say, yesterday I went to the gym or... There was a, once upon a time, there was a dog called Jonathan, and you just continue the story, okay? Try to not overthink it, and try to just use the intuition, okay? Get into groups of four or five or six, it doesn't really matter. I want to know whether you found this exercise easier or harder than the previous one. Okay, that's the main feedback that I want to know. You find this exercise easier or harder than one word? Equal. So, you find it equal? The same. Okay, interesting. Equal but easier. You find it a little bit easier? Easier? Funny. Funnier. Did anyone find it harder? Usually they get some people that find it a little bit harder. Yeah? So why do you think it was a little bit harder? You find it a lot harder? Anyone else find it a little bit harder? A little bit harder, yeah? So I usually get very mixed feedback. Usually, if you found this exercise harder, it is because, because once you reduce your fear of judgment, you automatically increase your ability to speak, communicate, and express yourself. <coughs> we struggle to speak in the rooms where we feel the most judged. So if we can reduce our fear of judgment, we automatically increase our ability to speak and express ourselves. Okay. This is a concept that, of course, if you had more time, we'd go into it in a lot more detail. However, just as I explained at the beginning, fear of public speaking is the fear of judgment. But these things are not binary. So it's not, do I fear judgment? Yes. Do I fear judgment? No. It's more so on a scale of one to 10, how much does this situation make me feel judged? It will be a diff different number in different situations. So as I'm speaking to you now, my fear of judgment is really low. When I'm speaking at conferences in America with 3,000 people, my fear of judgment is a little bit higher. But your job is to help yourself reduce it. One thing we all suffer from as humans is something called the spotlight effect. Spotlight effect is a psychological thing that we go through where we think everything we do is being watched by everyone with a magnifying glass. So we think that everyone's watching our every little moves, where in fact, they don't. So little things like running for the train, right? The train is in one minute, you could run and catch it, but a voice in your head will tell you, run? You're gonna run? Everyone's gonna see you running. You can't run. Just be late, right? Just be late. And then you think, yeah, that's right. I'm just gonna walk, right? But no one actually cares, you know? And a lot of the time in life, we go through these situations where like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna walk into the room. Everyone's gonna see me walking in. Oh my God. No one actually cares, right? So understanding that is really important. So that when Brian tells you, oh, danger, oh, oh, everyone cares. 
you can tell Brian, actually, I'm sure it's not that bad. Okay, because as humans, again, you will always have that. There is no way to get rid of that. Me as a sprinter, the voice still tells me, don't run. But I think, you know what, I'm still going to do it, right? So the, the secret, the hack, is playing games with yourself and catching yourself in those moments, right? Ah, nice one, right? I'm sure they don't actually care. Nine times out of 10, people don't actually care. And even if they did care and they were judging us, should that stop us from becoming confident people, right? Really important question to ask ourselves. So next exercise we're going to do, vulnerability-based exercise. Like I said, this exercise is called No Filter. So for this exercise, it's time for someone to come to the front. The person speaking has to tell us how they are feeling right here, right now. It's called no filter because you have to narrate those thoughts and feelings with no filter. So when they come to you, they come out. We did a gut exercise on purpose before because you have to trust your intuition. Don't overthink it. Rules. You are not allowed to speak in a past tense about how you felt, how you used to feel. You are not allowed to speak in a future tense about how you want to feel, how you're going to feel. You have to keep it present. Right now, how are you feeling right now? What's happening in your body right now? Is your heart beating fast? Do you wish you never came up? Are your legs shaking? What's happening? Last rule, it has to be real. It has to be authentic. Sometimes people come to the front and they say, I'm so happy to, to be here. And I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> okay, be honest with us. It has to be honest, okay? So those are the rules. Your brain is telling you, I'm not putting my hand up. <laughs> but does anyone want to go first? He's feeling brave. At the end, let's give him a huge round of applause. <laughs> woo, 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 woo. All right. So how are you feeling right here, right now? Tell us. Often, what we do when we sit down is we catastrophize. So we think of the worst case scenario. So you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, when I stand up, I'm going to fall. Everyone's going to see me falling. My tooth's going to fall out. <laughs> then I'm going to have to go to the hospital. None of that's going to happen, okay? So that was really, really good. I want you to try it one more time, but I'm going to give you some feedback, okay? So I thought that was really good. Very good voice projection. What I want you to try and do is try and make eye contact with everyone, okay? What's going to help you do that is a little bit of movement. So before you were just standing here, so I want you to just try and move a little bit, tell us how you feel, then move here a little bit, then tell them how you feel. Then you can take a seat. You want to try it? Yeah. You can do it. You can do it. So take a deep breath. Okay, how are you feeling right here, right now? Add a little bit of movement. Let's go. Good. Amazing. Good. 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 Huge round of applause. So good. So good. Did you guys see a difference? Just that small bit of movement made you look so much more confident. So honestly, remember that going forwards, and honestly, really good. Well done. Another round of applause. You. So good, right? You wanna give it a go? Okay, let's go, let's give a round of applause. So that was good. The fact that you've never done that before, really, really good. So next time, when the voice tells you don't do it, remember today, because you did it and you were just fine, okay? So really good. How do you feel right here, right now? Tell us. Amazing. Huge round of applause! Another first time. How did you find that? Uh, it's quite difficult for me. Yeah, it should be. to come out from there. Huge. Very, very good. But the good thing with doing these things is that you can use it as an anchor next time. So next time when you feel the nerves, because you will feel it again, you can think, you know what? I did it last time. I'm still alive. <laughs> right? 
I can do it again next time. So that was really, really good. I want you to try again, do two things for me, two things. Number one, when speaking and communicating, our arms and hands should be in what we call the influence zone, area between your belly button and your shoulders, okay? So you should try and avoid staying like this, or staying like this, or staying like this. Whether you're using your hands to express yourself or you just have them together like this, you want your hands to be in the influence zone. Number two, I want you to try and slow down your pace. Sometimes when we're nervous, we speak really, really fast, we speak really fast, we speak really fast. So try to speak a little bit slower, okay? So two things, hands in the influence zone, speak a bit slower. And then try that again, okay? So how are you feeling right now? You've been there for a while, gave you some feedback. Let's go. Amazing. Uh, I, I think that if I would have chances to speak in the public, Good. I would improve myself. Good. Get another 10 seconds? Give me another 10 seconds. <laughs> uh, I don't know that, that I should speak. Actually, I don't have any specific topics uh -huh. to talk about. Uh, so I will drag you just. <laughs> Big round of applause, guys. Yeah. Really good. Well done. Uh, kind of, you know, my influences with other people and how I'm in contact with people as well on an everyday basis, it's really kind of helped me to sort of realise that, yeah, it's, i just got to do myself, i just got to be myself. So I'm really grateful today to meet all of you guys today and also Fred, thank you for this. And yeah, that's it really. Huge round of applause. <laughs> wow. Exactly. Where's the men? Come on. Boys. Hello, everyone. My name is Owen. I feel like I'm, you know, uh, this is kind of, kind of meeting when we are like um, ex-alcoholic. So, <laughs> ex so actually, I feel so calm. I feel like uh, I know everyone here and I'm not even nervous. I, well, actually, I'm nervous because of my language for you. Mm. But I'm not nervous because you are here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I feel so calm. <laughs> Many things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another 20 seconds. Another 20 seconds. Another 20 seconds. About how you're feeling. How you're feeling. For you, and it's probably got to do with, like you said, the English that you weren't too yeah. confident with. I want you to project your voice a little bit more. Because, could you hear him at the back? No. Mm. I, I missed that. Yeah. I'm hearing Kate. So okay. I'm talking quietly. About the world. Yes. Just because this is how it's built, you know. It Makes sense. Because I have no problem to speak louder, but when I'm getting loud, louder, I'm, I'm not sure that it's not too much for the, for the record. Got you, got you. So the feedback would be to go a little bit louder. Because for us hearing, like, I'm even standing not too far and I couldn't really hear. Yeah, I know. I know yeah. That. So that's definitely something that triangle, if usually you speak here, when it's a group of people, try and speak here. I'm going to practice this. Practice that. Yeah. Try and, do you want to try it now? Well, yeah? Yeah. 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 Let's try it now. Let's try it now. Let's try it now. Okay, I'm going to try it again. Cool. So if I'm at the back, so literally, me and Nelly's going to be like this if we need to more, yeah? I'm back again since the very beginning, so my name is Sam, and I feel so good that I'm here today. Feeling, okay? Like I said, the problem with nerves is that we try to run away from them. We do everything we can to not feel nervous. When we feel the nerves, then we feel weaponized. Like, oh my gosh, I shouldn't be feeling nervous. Why do I feel nervous? I shouldn't feel nervous. Then it's a downward spiral. All of the people that came up to speak just now, apart from the gentleman, felt nervous at some point, but they still did it. Confidence isn't the lack of nerves. Confidence is feeling the nerves, but still doing it. Yeah, that's confidence. So I've been running for 13 years. Before a big race, if there's a camera in my face, I will be nervous, 100%. I know someone who's a musician. They've been singing for 20 years. Before a big show, they get nervous. Nerves are normal. Okay, so it's about not weaponizing them, just embracing them. Careful, nervous, but I'm still gonna do it, okay? Last exercise we're gonna do, simple topic, uh, table topic exercise. So me or someone in the audience will give you a topic, any topic, for example, London, for example, chairs, for example, trees, parks, and you have to create a 60 second speech around this topic. I'm gonna be over there timing the 60 seconds. If you finish before the 60 seconds, you have to keep going. What might happen is as you're doing your speech, Brian may tell you, this doesn't make sense. You're talking rubbish. Go and sit down. Still keep going, okay? Another thing Brian might tell you is if I say trains, Brian will tell you, you don't know anything about trains. You don't know about trains. Keep going, just trust your gut and go for one minute.
Okay. So who, oh wait, I remember you said you put your hand up before, isn't it? Let's give a round of applause. That's what you always do, especially when improvising, introduce yourself because you're going to give yourself time to think. So hello guys, my name is Fred and I'm going to talk to you guys about holidays. You've wasted a good five seconds and you've given yourself time to think about the next thing and then you slow it down, okay? So same thing, but a little bit slower. Also, if you're going to move, try and move laterally rather than up and down. Okay, up and down usually means I'm nervous. Whereas laterally usually means I'm okay, okay? So try and maybe move side to side rather than up and down like this, yeah? So slower and move like this rather than like that, okay? Your new topic is social media. Three, two, one, go. So young nowadays, uh, we are in trending of the Instagram. And it's so really, really trending for uh, uh, the young students. Good. Slower. Slower. Oh, well done. Well done. Round of applause. Give a huge round of applause. Well done. <laughs> Oh, amazing. Good, good, good. Much, much, much yeah. better. Good, good, good. All right, because of time, we're going to move on. So today we mainly focused on, like I said, the first part of speaking, which is increasing your belief and reducing your anxiety. So I'll give you techniques that you can use to help reduce your anxiety and actually believe that you can get better. All of you can get better. Techniques, like I said, are important, just not in isolation. Okay, so for example, if you were to have a longer time to do the training, these are the eight techniques that we would focus on. Voice projection. Tone of variety. Tone of variety and emotion are really important because you can say the same sentence, the same words, but with different tone of variety and it will mean two different emotions. So I could say to you, wow, you bought a new house, okay. Or I could say, wow, you bought a new house, okay. Same words, different tone of variety, different emotion, okay. Pace, some, some of us speak a little bit too fast and Speaking fast is okay, but just when you say important things, you slow down. So you speak, you speak, you speak, you speak, but this is important, so I slow down. Okay, that's the thing with pace. Same with uh, voice projection. Sometimes you project when you're saying something exciting, when you're saying something sad, you reduce your projection, okay? Body language, intention, content, and breath, all right? So let's go back to those lovely numbers that you had at the beginning of the class, and please write down your new number. Okay, so after one hour of coaching, some of you came up to speak. How do you now feel about public speaking? How would you rate your fear of judgment? Please put down your new number. I'm hoping you didn't get worse. Okay, so I'm hoping you don't feel worse about public speaking. Hopefully you feel a little bit better. Afterwards, when you write down your new number, please give me your post-it note so I can see that you've made a little bit of progress. Even if you went from an eight to a seven, very good. Because you just did a class for one hour and you improved a little bit. The aim of the game is to keep improving, keep improving, keep improving, keep improving, keep improving. So I don't expect you to go from a 10 to a 1 after today. But hopefully you went from maybe even an 8 to a 7.5. I can tell you something. Yes. I could. Can I come? Of course. Yeah. I could put myself from 4 to 5. Okay. I'm a video creator. Okay. On social media. Always on social media. All my life on social media. Yeah. Doing videos about anything. But in spite of this, I put four and five. But I think after this session, which I have to say it will be the thank you so much for this opportunity in my life. I give myself one to two. I'm not sure if one to two is okay <laughs> for me, but I feel myself more confident. Beautiful. You're so here speaking to us. <laughs> Huge round of applause! <laughs> Wow. Always I'm saying, okay, 
my language, very uh language -huh. that we said before. But I think it's very important. Yes. This is me. Exactly. So I'm not important. I love that. Huge round of applause. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that's amazing. That's, that's what it's about. Just understanding that, look, this is me. I'm going to be the best version of myself. It's not about like, being this person, being that person. Some coaches I really dislike when they try and coach people to sound like Obama, to sound like Tony Robbins, because you're not Obama. You have to be you, okay? So really important, though, really, really important. I didn't put zero on purpose because you can never be a zero, okay? Confidence is an infinite game, infinite game which means that the aim isn't to just get confident and put it in your pocket, you have to stay confident. It's just like fitness. Even if you are super fit, you go to the gym every day, if you stop going for some time, you start going backwards. Same thing with confidence. If you don't stay on top of it, you will start going backwards. The aim of the game is to stay confident, okay? So always, always, always remember that. Now, going back to learning, same condition, different behavior. I'm hoping that now, when you feel nervous and anxious, you can exhibit a different behavior which means you slow down your pace, you actually come out of your comfort zone and you believe in yourself. That will show me that I would have learned something, okay? So big well done for coming. Let's give Elisa also a big round of applause for organizing this. If you wanna stay connected, guys, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Instagram, this is my podcast. If you want to do like further training or maybe you have a workplace that's like, this could benefit the team at work or anything, just feel free to get in touch and then we'll be more than happy to help you me and my organization, okay? So we run programs, we do corporate away days, we do workshops, we do loads of things. So if you wanna do more training, just get in touch. I'm on Instagram, on LinkedIn mainly, and love to help, all right? Thank you so much for coming, guys. Thank you. Thank you.